Hi, I'm Bill Dusty, and in this video, I'm going to go over some of the steps that I took to prepare for and take the FAA's Part 107 certification exam for small UAVs. Now, for me, I decided to self-study, and that's really what this video is going to be about, uh, what the steps that I took to self-study and then take the exam once that time came. Uh, now, first of all, I understand that not everybody feels comfortable self-studying. Uh, and for those who don't, uh, the online schools that are available are an excellent resource. Uh, you know, there are some fine schools out there. Uh, they vary in price. I've seen as low as 100 and as high as 500. Uh, personally, 500 is a little steep. So uh, I would be wary of that. Uh, I would really uh, tend to go with where the rest of the pack is, which is around 1 to 200. And again, if you feel comfortable self-studying, go ahead and self-study. It is possible. There are several people such as myself who have self-studied and we've done well in the exam. Uh, so I'm going to go over uh, what I did to prepare for this exam. And uh, hopefully that can help you guys out as well. Uh, first of all, when you go to the FAA site uh, for the to get your materials and, and prepare for this thing, the first thing you're going to get is the study guide it's a pdf they link to it on the faa links to it in there and their uav section uh, and this uh, pdf is about 80 pages long and i'm sure you may have heard from other people that this alone is not enough to pass the exam and they are correct it is not enough it is a good overview uh, it does uh, have some in-depth uh, topics in there so it is valuable to have and it's valuable to study. I took I myself, I got my notepad here, I took about 30 pages of notes just out of this. So it is worth uh, studying on your own. What I do to study is I, I read it through first, and this is true for any exam uh, from high school on up through college. I read through the material first and then I go through it a second time and I take notes. And that's when I took all these notes here is when I went through it a second time. So I studied this, and this was one of the things I did. And the other thing I did is I utilized a lot of the resources on YouTube. These, there's a lot of free video clips, 10, 15 minute clips, and also some longer ones, an hour or more, uh, that you can uh, get a hold of. Just you know, search Part 107 exam uh, video, and you can get probably dozens of different little clips and videos. They cover sectional charts, uh, airport operations, uh, you know, UAV specifically, which if you're taking the exam, you should probably know a lot about UAVs anyway. However, if you don't, there's another online resource you can go to that the FAA also hosts. Now, this one is available. I'm going to put a screenshot up there. It's the FAA safety uh, website. And on that site, they have exams for pilots, for manned aircraft pilots. And one of the exams that they have is for UAVs. Now, this exam is for pilots who have already been certified. They've already got their pilot's license and they've already paid. So this exam is free. OK, there's an online course that you take and then the exam follows. It's a 20 question exam. You have to get 100 percent to pass it. Uh, again, it's free. Uh, so if you don't pass it, you can take it again in a couple weeks and, and you know, uh, try to get 100% in that case. Now, with this UAV exam, for people like you and I who are strictly drone flyers, it doesn't count. Okay, you can't take this exam and tell people you're certified because you're not. The real exam is the $150 exam. It's a proctored exam. you got to go to an airport, uh, take it. They'll watch, they'll watch you live or watch you on video. And you got two hours to answer to 60 questions. And that's the real exam. This exam, though, that's online for pilots, for man pilots, is actually a very good resource because it, uh, some of the questions may or may not appear in the exam that we take. So it's a good opportunity for you to get some experience in answering some questions there. So that online resource, this study guide, and the clips that I mentioned on YouTube are all excellent resources. And those are the big three that I used to prepare for the exam. Now, I also uh, downloaded and printed out some uh, other guides. This is the key, uh, a legend that is in all sectional charts. Uh, you actually get
get to uh, use this in the exam. When you're in the exam room, uh, they give you a, a reference chart that you use. It's a booklet with uh, a bunch of maps and everything. And you get this. So you can study this for your own use, but you do get this in the study guide, or in the, excuse me, the reference material that comes with the exam. And you can look at it during the exam. Uh, but I studied this and I got them know that get familiar with this pretty well. I also uh, studied NOTAMs, uh, TAFs, and METARs. Uh, get to know these, study them well. Uh, they will be in the exam. Uh, make sure you know uh, what the abbreviations are and uh, what everything means. It, it's not going to take too long uh, to do all of this, but again, take your time and study. I took a, about a month to study, not because I was worried about anything, but because I wanted to have a thorough knowledge of everything that I was looking at. Uh, so I took a solid month, I studied everything, and then when the time came, uh, it was about the end of September, uh, I called up the uh, exam uh, place. Now, I can tell you, don't call the airport directly uh, they do not schedule the exams. There's a, a number on, on the FAA site when you're ready to take the exam. You go to the FAA site and you go to the uh, testing area and there's a link there and they'll give you a long list of airports where you can take the exam. And they give you their phone numbers too, which is probably the, the misleading part. But don't call their phone number, the airport's phone number. There's a phone number at the very top that you call. That number uh, once you call that number, they'll uh, they'll set you up an appointment. They'll contact the airport and set you up. And uh, it, it's a, an appointment of your choosing, whatever is convenient for you, whatever time of day, as long as the airport's open and their testing facility is open, you can go ahead and take it. Uh, I went there in the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday. I went to Northampton uh, Airport. Uh, the people there were very nice. Uh, they slotted me in. I, I went upstairs. I went in the exam room. Uh, they had a a video camera watching me uh, take the exam. I had two hours. It took me about an hour though. And from what I hear from a lot of people, that's about how long it takes. This really is about an hour. Uh, 60 questions. You got to get 70%. Uh, so, you know, take your time. Answer the questions. They're multiple choice. If you studied properly like I did and like you should, you should have no problem passing this test. Again, I, I self-studied and I got two wrong, okay? And, it, and I think, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think I guessed on only three. But there were educated guesses. You know, I was pretty familiar with what they were talking about, I just didn't know the exact answer, so I guessed. Uh, and it, as it turned out, uh, of the two wrong, I got two wrong, but it wasn't of those three. I, get, I guessed right on those three. So, you know, uh, that's the way to go, really. Uh, you use this, study this, Use the videos on YouTube. There's a lot of them. Uh, pay particular attention to airport operations and sectional charts. And then also take the FAA's exam for man pilots, that, U that UAV exam that's like 20 questions. Again, you got to get 100%, but it's okay because it's free. So if you get one wrong, it's all right. But it's a good opportunity for you to get some questions that may or may not end up on the, uh, on the exam that you're going to be taking for real. And that's it for this video and good luck to you in your exam and we'll talk to you later.